Okay guys, today we're in the plant biology research tree lines. What I did is I went through with a 10 foot pole with markings on it um, to do the measurements. It made it easy, but it made it as close as possible. I rounded to the nearest foot. The way that I'm gonna do this is I have a 10 foot pole here. It's pretty lightweight aluminum 10 foot pole and I've made marks. This is 10 feet, so I made a mark at five feet and then I made a mark at two and a half feet. And so when I go up to a tree, I'm going to be as precise as possible to the nearest half a foot. That's how we had been doing it in the past, so we're keeping that consistent. If you sound like there's a rattlesnake behind me, that's because we have the drips running. We've been running the drips to these trees eight hours uh, once a week and uh, giving them a deep soaking. We vary that early spring and fall and then pretty much non-existent in the winter. Um, what I did was I marked down the measurements of each. I'll be talking about that and speaking specifically to some of the tree issues as we go. You are going to note that on your data sheet and transfer over to record that data for the year 2020. Normally this is what we do in person here, but today I'm doing that for you and you're processing that data. All right. Let's okay guys, this is the Canada red choke cherry. This is 10 feet tall by seven feet wide. It's got this really dark red color to the leaves and it is deciduous, drops its leaves. It is still pushing off suckers. We've cut these off multiple years. A sucker is a part growing from down low. We call that a sucker. It also still has the stakes on it. Uh, these could probably come off now and actually this isn't even connected. So these stakes could go away and be used for the new trees. This thing is suckering so profusely that there is a sucker coming up way over here, which is potentially uh, four or five feet away from the tree. Again, Canada red choke cherry, 10 foot by seven foot. You now are gonna ascertain the health of this tree and the attractiveness in your own opinion. Okay, the next tree is a Chinese pistache. This is interesting because in year past, we cut the top out. We had to cut the top out because the top was dead. Well, now the top is dead all the way down to almost to the ground. It sprouted back from the ground um, and it is now four feet tall by four feet wide. This is a Chinese pistache and the specific variety is called Red Push. Red Push is a trademark variety that when the new growth comes out, it has this reddish tinge to it. But Chinese pistache, a really neat tree, but now we got a bush kind of close to the ground. Now it did grow four feet by four feet in one season. So the root mass is fueling this uh, and it'll grow probably double that size again next year, but we don't have a tree top. And because it died two winters in a row, that's a little concerning. It could be environmental. Um, it could be um, the way we're caring for it. But again, that's not ideal right there. Okay, next. Okay, we're here at the Deodora Cedar. It is six feet tall, three and a half feet wide. And this is a classic deserty tree that kind of looks like a Christmas tree, but grows pretty fast once it gets established. Again, we got the wood poles that could come off and be used for our new trees. Um, it is still leaning just a little bit, but with age, I think it'll right itself. And we have approximately this much new growth on the tree from this year, you can tell. Old growth, new growth. It's real light green in color and flexible. That is the Deodora Cedar. Next tree is the ornamental pear. It is 12 feet tall, four and a half feet wide. And again, this was planted in 2017. Um, there is a broken off stake right next to the base of it that could probably come out. And you can see the old ties that we used to have this staked up because this tree was pretty spindly before and now it's filling in nicely. This ratty look to the edge, this browning is a lot of sun scald and some iron chlorosis. This is a tree that classically has a little bit of trouble taking up iron from our desert soil. And another thing I'm noticing on this tree, even though it looks pretty good, is this side of the trunk is really darker and cracked uh, and it's actually lightening up in some places. If I look directly to the southwest, that's where the sun sets in the heat of the day from here all the way down to set. 
It is interesting to note that there are large cracks and grooves and it looks like a little bit of sun scald on this south uh, western facing side. So something to note, something for us to watch on this tree. Okay, the last tree in uh, row number one is a red bud. Um, this red bud is nine feet tall and it's five feet wide. It has a sucker coming from the base that needs to be removed unless we want a multi-trunk tree. And there is some gopher evidence here. That's not ideal because gophers can get in and damage the roots. That's pretty fresh, so we have some work to do. There is also some, um, some browsing here. It's, it's older. It's within the last year because I can see this is starting to grow back. But uh, this was eaten either by rabbits or potentially like a gopher came up, chewed on this in the winter when there was nothing else. But it's healing, it's wounding back. I didn't see that other than just today was the first time I saw that. So this is red bud. It's got a big heart-shaped heart -shaped leaf, but it's pretty tattered. You can see the edges are all tattered from the wind and going through the summer months. Okay, that's the end of row number one. All right, row number two, our first species is the Colorado blue spruce. It's four feet tall, three feet wide, seems to be doing just fine. Doesn't look much different than when we put it in uh, in 2018. Not a ton of growth here. And there is some field bindweed pressure growing along the base and a few tumbleweeds. So some uh, management things that need to get cleaned up. Uh, during the year, last year, we also did put down this weed fabric. It's a weed cloth and then these strips of bark to help mulch and keep the weeds out. But clearly bindweed is coming up from uh, right next to this tree. That's uh, pressure that we continue to watch on all these trees, especially the young, smaller ones. All right, Colorado blue spruce. This is our gamble oak. You can see some animal digging spots near the base, some rabbits are hanging out. We want to be friendly to wildlife, we just don't want them to attack our trees. This gamble oak is six feet tall and three and a half feet wide, and it's exhibiting slow growth, but it is alive and it has stopped growing for the season, but you can literally see uh, maybe two inches of growth here this season. Okay, moving on. Centennial red maple. This tree is 11 feet tall this year and five feet wide. You're noticing some of that classic iron deficiency and summer issues, but overall, this tree is okay. Um, we could do a little better with nutrients for it, but that's got the classic maple leaf look to it. It's tied up kind of funny. I think this tree was pretty spindly before, but it's writing itself. It's tied up kind of interesting with the green tape, and I think the green tape has slipped down because tying it that close to the ground isn't really going to help. So this tree has had a lot of sway and a lot of movement, and it's pretty tall. Okay, this is the Blue Ice Arizona Cypress. Um, when we planted this tree, we had to dig it up from another site, so we cut, cut the top of it out in 2018. It started to develop now a new top. One of these will take the lead and become the central leader for our new tree, and we'll just kind of let it do its thing. Uh, this one is seven feet tall and five feet wide, and it is a native plant. It's an improved cultivar of a native plant, and it seems to be doing just fine here, and there's quite a bit of new growth um, as you can see this season. So this is going uh, pretty good on the Blue Ice Arizona Cypress. This is a blood good sycamore. It's one of our larger trees. I think it is the largest tree here, but it was also the largest when we planted it as well. So that's why we're taking measurements every year. This tree is 14 feet tall and five feet wide. Um, one thing to note is there is some gopher activity near the base, which needs to be watched. You can see that fresh soil being moved. It is tied up because it's so top heavy, but there's lots of sway for this tree and it has strengthened and rooted in pretty good. And our only tree that has the starts of a bird nest in it. So this tree is large enough to, to house a bird. It doesn't look like anything successful happened, but the birds at least started in there this year. It is a little wind tattered and a little iron deficient, but 
these big old leaves seem to be uh, pretty healthy this year. That's the end of tree line number two. Okay, now we're looking at tree line number three. This is the Arapaho crepe myrtle. This was a beautiful blooming red tree last year, very spindly, but beautiful and blooming when we planted it. Uh, the wind blew it down, cut the ties at the end of 2019. I tied it back up uh, early in the fall. Uh, I noted that because it was just laying completely flat on the ground. However, this spring when everything else woke up and started coming out, this tree never sprouted out. But just recently at the end of uh, summer, I noticed, unfortunately, when I was spraying these weeds down here, you can see them dead, I noticed a little sprout coming up and it got burned a little bit from my spray, but I pulled back just in time to keep it alive. But I just called this less than half a foot in height. Obviously, this is like a few inches, but sticking with our data collection, this is less than half a foot. We'll probably cut this off because as you can see, this is completely dead. We'll cut this off and see what comes back. But since we're approaching winter and it doesn't look like this is getting any new growth this year, we're hoping for new growth, explosive growth next spring. We could train up a, a large bush or we can train it back into a tree. We'll let it go for a while and then decide if we want to replace it. But it did um, fail and I think it's because of winter cold damage returning from the roots. This is a blue atlas cedar, again planted in 2019. It's eight feet tall and four feet wide. Um, some of these lower branches have grown out pretty aggressively. That's uh, indicated by the extra growth this year, but the top hasn't, it hasn't shot up anymore, but it is going wider at the top. Kind of a neat, interesting uh, Dr. Seuss look uh, to this tree. And it seems to be doing well in this uh, desert conditions. This is a raywood ash. The raywood ash is nine feet tall, four feet wide. Doesn't look much different than when we planted it, although it did fill out a little bit. It was pretty sparse last year. And there is a little bit of thrip damage on these leaves. You can see the tracks, the thrips took, uh, just little uh, scoring of the leaf where they fed. Just marred the leaves just enough, but the, the tree seems to be doing okay. And it's, uh, it's been in the ground for a year. This is the Black Hill Spruce. This year it's five foot tall, three feet wide. It didn't put on a lot of growth, but it, it maintained and it stayed alive. You can see right here, drippers are running out here next to the tree. We left these long so as this tree gets older we can move it out in a way where the roots are but right now we have four drippers around the periphery of this tree and that's the same thing we have around all of these trees so we're trying to water these trees 20 to 30 gallons a week um, right now this one interestingly still has the tag on it um, both tags so we'll need to remove that tag so it doesn't cinch down and cause a choking point for this tree. Okay, Black Hill Spruce. They called this a three to four foot tall Black Hill Spruce when we got it. Um, it is saying now that this tree is five feet tall. So knowing that it didn't grow very much makes me think we got a pretty good deal on this tree. We got an extra foot, but it didn't grow an extra foot. It will, hopefully. This is an October Glory Maple planted last year. 12 feet tall, four feet wide. This one has had trouble with the, uh, with the tag, uh, with the uh, supports here. This keeps slipping down and it looks like the top one came off completely. You can see it's, it's rubbed here and it's rubbed here. Um, it was kind of wedged nicely there. We want the tree to be able to sway and move, but this one was tied really tight to the stick. And when we removed it from the stick and put in these larger supports, it keeps breaking away because it's really pulling. So the tree itself is exhibiting some new growth. That, that's new leaves coming out there, classic maple leaf. But you can see there's some old ratty nastiness from June and July that's being overcome. The leaves are pretty small. They're pretty minimized for a maple, but that's just part of having this tree in the desert. 
kind of a lean to it as well. All right, this is a green Austrian pine. It's five and a half feet tall, three and a half feet wide. It put on a little growth this year. These are called candles. It's setting these candles for next spring. This is be fast active growth that'll push out of that. You can kind of follow this back. One year's growth, two year's growth, three year's growth. You can kind of track how old this tree is based on the growth, or you can cut it down or core it and count the rings, the growth rings. But again, this tree is doing fine. A green pine in the desert, and it's grown just a little bit. Okay. Those are our tree lines. What you're going to do is transfer the heights and widths onto your data sheet. You're going to add the health uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the best, attractiveness in your opinion, 1 to 10, and then any comments that you could glean from my video.